This is section 16.4 on green theorem in the plane. Uh, it only applies in the plane. We'll get a higher dimensional version later on. Okay, so page 1096, 16.4, Green's theorem. So we're talking about a simple closed curve. So we have to have a closed curve and in a positive orientation, which is counterclockwise. So this is such a situation of positive because we can get this thing focus. We're going counterclockwise. This is also positive because overall it's going counterclockwise. Uh, negative orientation will be clockwise. So this would be considered negative orientation. All right, so Green's theorem in a plane, page 1096. Here is the theorem. So let's see be positively oriented, meaning counterclockwise. Otherwise it'd be negative. Piecewise smooth, simple closed curve in the plane and let D be the region bounded by C. Okay, it's a picture that looks sort of like this. Okay, if P and Q have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains D, then we have the following. Okay, so the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same. Okay, the integral along the curve, you can integrate along the curve of P dx plus Q dy. That's the same as F dot dr, by the way, but F is PQ and dr is dx dy, only in two dimensions is equal to the double integral of the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y, D, A. <clears throat> and first thing you may want to notice is that most of the problems in this section, these are not going to be equal. And you might recall from the previous section that when these were equal, you have a conservative vector field, which means most of the problems in this section are not going to be involving conservative vector fields because otherwise it's too easy. That means these two are equal, you're integrating zero, and if you integrate zero, you get zero, so it's too easy. So most of these are not gonna be conservative vector fields. And a little bit of what um, notation, sometimes you see the integral with a circle around it like so, and sometimes if you can see that there's a circle with an arrow pointing in a counterclockwise direction. So these are sometimes used to integrate that the line integral is in a positive orientation of the closed curve. Okay, not necessary, but instead of a curve, this indicates that it's closed curve and this indicates that it's a positively oriented, simple closed curve. All right, so this is called Green's theorem in a plane and we'll do some problems with that. Uh, you can look over the proof uh, of it or not, It'll leave it up to you, all right? So sometimes it's easier to do the left side, sometimes it's easier to do the right side, it just depends on the particular problem. Okay, it might be easier to do one double integral than to do many single, uh, integrals as it were, okay? All right, so one more problems begin on 11.01. Okay, so evaluate two ways, it says, directly and by using Green's theorem. So that means they want you to do both sides, the left and the right hand side. A little bit more. Okay, and then a little bit about the language that they use here. It says use Green's theorem to evaluate the integral of f dot dr. That means they don't want you to actually figure out the integral of f dot dr. Use Green's theorem by doing the right hand side. So integral of f dot dr would be this. The idea is not to do this. Presumably, it's harder, but it's easy to do the double integral. Okay, we'll see that language showing up a little bit later on also. Okay, so that would be 11, 13, and so on. Okay, so I think that's what we have. Question number one. Integral along the curls curve, counterclockwise, y squared dx plus x squared y dy, that's p dx plus q dy. Don't bother like the previous section trying to determine if it's conservative vector field. Most of these are not gonna be conservative vector fields. In other words, the partial of p with respect to y is not gonna be seen, the partial of q with respect to x. In fact, just a quick survey that that's not gonna be true here. All right, so evaluate directly after break it up into four parts. Curve C1, C2, C3, and C4, and add them all up. 
C1, y is zero, x going from zero to five. C2, x is five, y going from zero to four. C3, y equals four, x goes from five to zero. And that has to be specific. We're going in this direction. So you're not going from zero to five, you're going from five to zero. Likewise, C4, x is zero, y is going from four to zero, arrow down. And so the integral along C is the integral of C1, C2, C3, and C4. Okay, so C1, you've got the integral of, well, let's see, y is zero, so that's a zero. Y is zero, that's a zero. So zero plus zero is zero. C1 is just gonna be zero. C2, y goes from zero to four of y squared dx. Well, dx, there is no change in x, so that's zero. x squared y dy, well, x is five, so that's 25y dy from zero to four. So 25y squared over two, plug in zero, you get zero, plug in four, 25 times eight, 200. And so this integral is zero, this integral is 200. C3, y is four, that means dy is zero. So I'm taking the integral of, this part is zero because dy is zero. y squared is four squared 16, dx, and you're integrating from five to zero, you're going backwards. Okay, so 16x from five to zero, that comes out to be negative 80. And C4, x is zero, that means dx is zero. So x is zero, that's zero, dx is zero, that's zero. So you end up with zero. So the grand total along the curve C is what you got for C1, C2, C3, C4, zero, 200, negative 80, and zero comes out to be 120. <clears throat> All right, so that was somewhat lengthy. Okay. Now, using the right-hand side, the theorem, I think, is a little bit easier. Okay, so Green's theorem says, take the partial of Q with respect to X, subtract the partial of P with respect to Y. So partial of Q with respect to X is 2XY, minus the partial of P with respect to Y is 2Y. Okay, and that's what I'm integrating. Okay, so dy dx, y goes from zero to four, x goes from zero to five. So integrate with respect to y, that's two x y becomes x y squared over two, x y squared over two times two, and then minus y squared from zero to four, plug in zero, you get zero, plug in four, get 16 x minus 16. So that becomes eight x squared minus 16 x from zero to five, plug in zero, you get zero, plug in five, you get uh, 200 minus 80, which comes out to be 120. So you get the same answer either way. And yes, interestingly enough, the 200 and the 80, those were the non-zero answers we got here. You might know this. I got a zero, a zero, but a 200 and a negative 80, which was exactly what we got over here also. Okay, so that was interesting. Okay, here's five. <clears throat> Integral of y e to the x dx plus two e to the x dy. That's p dx q dy. Okay, and this time only use the right-hand side the theorem asked for. So positive orientation, so rather than doing all four of those, it's normally much easier to go straight to this. So partial of Q with respect to X is two E to the X. Partial of P with respect to Y is E to the X. So when you integrate, you just integrate E to the X. Uh, so integral of E to the X is E to the X. <clears throat> oh, and yeah, this thing does not depend on Y. So just take out the length of the interval if I go DX to Y. So it's four times the integral of e to the x. So four e to the x from zero to three. So four times e cubed minus one. Okay, number nine, integral of y cubed dx minus x cubed dy. And you're integrating along x squared plus y squared equals four. So partial of q with respect to x is negative three x squared. Partial of p with respect to y is negative three y squared. <clears throat> okay, this looks like a good fit for switching the polar coordinates. Factor out the negative three. I have x squared plus y squared, which is r squared, times r dr d theta. Remember, one form of dA is r dr theta. r goes from zero to two, theta goes from zero to two pi. This thing does not involve theta, so take out the length of the interval, negative three times two pi. And I'm integrating r cubed, so negative six pi r to the fourth over four. Plug in zero, you get zero. Plug in two, you get four. Negative 24 pi. Okay, 11. Uh, here's F, you go from zero, zero to zero, four to two, zero to zero, zero. This is clockwise, that's a negative orientation. Okay, so I have to keep in mind that um, 
doing that. And let's see, this is y equals negative two x plus four or y or four minus two x, okay? And I started to show partial of q with respect to x, turns into this partial of p with respect to y, okay? So you're gonna end up integrating this and I decided it was too long. So that's the reason why I decided to skip it. Okay, so skip problem 11. And then 13, I'm capitalizing on the language. It says use the theorem to evaluate integral of f dot dr. It means don't do that. The left-hand side, do the right-hand side. And it also says orient it clockwise. So I know that's going to be a negative orientation for problem 13. <clears throat> All right, so f of x, y is this. Okay, partial of q with respect to x is sine of y minus a partial of p with respect to y is one plus sine y. So if I subtract, I get negative one. So positive orientation, uh, sorry, negative orientation means I put a negative. It's the opposite of the integral of negative one dA where negative of negative one is one. So I just want the area. So what's the area of this thing? Well, the radius is two. So pi r squared for pi. And 17, this is f, distribute x squared plus xy, xy squared, going from zero, zero to one, zero to zero, one to zero, zero. That's counterclockwise, that's a positive orientation. And this is y equals one minus x. So partial of q with respect to x minus a partial of p with respect to y is y squared minus x. So I, that's what I integrate. Double integral, y squared minus x, dy dx, y goes from zero to one minus x, x goes from zero to one. Okay, so that's gonna be y cubed over three minus xy from zero to one minus x. Plug in zero, you get zero. Plug in one minus x. You get one third of one minus x cubed minus x times one minus x, a little bit clumsy. So one third, one minus x cubed minus x plus x squared. Okay, so integral one third of one minus x to the fourth over four times negative one by the chain root minus x squared over two plus x cubed over three. <clears throat> now if I plug in one, that's zero, that's negative a half and that's one third minus plug in zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's gonna be a negative one twelfth. So I have negative one half plus one third plus one twelfth, common denominator is 12. Final answer is negative one twelfth. All right, so that is section 16.4.